You know, a protein is not really a protein. Now, what am I talking about? A protein is not a protein. There's a few confusions related to this topic that I want to clear up because I keep running into them over and over and over. The first one relates to protein requirements, okay? So typically, the minimum requirement of protein that you need per day, on average, is like 50 grams. Now, the formula for that, which can cause this number to vary, is like 0 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per your kilogram weight, your body weight. Here's where the confusion lies. Let's take a beef steak, okay? You get 100 grams of this beef steak, which is about 3.5 ounces. And so here you are going to eat the steak, 100 grams, and you're thinking, wow, I'm getting double the amount that I really need, right? Now, because there's two things. We have the weight of the steak, okay? And then you have the amount of protein in the steak. Two different things. Because the actual protein in that beef is only 26 grams, not 100 grams. And now you're saying, well, wait a second. I thought it's, it's kind of just pure protein, isn't it? And like, no. There's some fat in there. And the rest of it is not carbs. The rest of it is mainly water, okay? Water weight. That's what it is. It has a lot of water weight in it. This is why when you freeze dry a steak, it's like paper. It's really light. But the point is, when you're dealing with these protein requirements, we're not talking about the actual weight of the food. We're talking about the protein in that food. So that's clarification number one. The next confusion and very important uh, thing to know is that one protein varies with other proteins in the amount of amino acids that they have as far as the quality and, and the ratios. So in other words, we really don't have a requirement for protein at all. We have a requirement for the amino acids in those proteins. And that's important because when you're looking at labels, it doesn't tell you the amino acids. It just says the total protein. When we're talking about the ketogenic diet, it says you need 20% protein, okay? But again, no one's talking about the amino acids. And the problem lies in the quality of protein or the bioavailable amino acids in protein food that you eat. It is a huge difference between animal protein and plant protein. The absolute best bioavailable protein is breast milk, but that's usually not available. So the second one is eggs and then meat and chicken and then dairy. And then way down the list, you get all these plant proteins. So some of the problem with plant proteins is they have all eight essential amino acids, but certain ones are very, very, very tiny, okay? Like leucine, for example. Leucine is essential to grow muscles. And if you're living on plant-based proteins, uh, you're not going to get a lot of leucine. And your muscles are going to suffer. Let's take wheat protein, which, by the way, is like 80% of all the plant-based protein comes from wheat. Very low in leucine, lysine, and methionine. But it's protein, right? Now, how can you overcompensate with that? Well, just eat more of it, right? Well, the problem is if you eat more of it, you're going to get more carbs, okay? Especially if you're doing like whole plant uh, foods. I mean, if you're going to ask me like, if you want to be a vegan and you want to have um, foods that are high in protein, what foods would they be? I mean, that's really hard because there is no um, vegan food that's just very high concentrated protein. There's some protein in nuts. There's some protein in soy. There's some protein in grains but there's also a good amount of carbs. So as you increase the protein, you increase the carbs and it bumps you completely out of keto. Now, I had someone on my show bring up this really interesting question about, um, she's a vegetarian um, and uh, she has gut issues um, and she wants to solve this problem. Now, I already know if you're doing keto, which she's trying to do, and um, you have problems with your gut, you should probably go carnivore. Well, that's a little conflicting if you're trying to be a vegetarian or a vegan. However, thank goodness she's a vegetarian, not a vegan, because at least she can do eggs. And that's what I told her to do. It is not easy to do keto on a vegan or a vegetarian diet, simply because now you're going to have to start consuming foods that are uh, refined, like re even refined protein powders. It's so interesting to me to see these um, vegan protein powders, and they call them clean protein versus what? 
um, dirty animal protein because it's dirty. What about the grass-fed, grass-finished animal protein? That's, that's pretty darn clean and it's complete. The plant-based protein doesn't even come close to the quality of protein that your body needs, especially if you're younger and you're growing child. If you feed a very small child certain foods without enough of the right amino acids, it can stunt their growth. And so I asked this lady, I said, um, why uh, did you become a vegetarian? She goes, well, my whole life I was a vegetarian because I just can't eat me because it hurts my stomach. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Our bodies naturally have a very acidic stomach. So acidic, like between one and three, that it's close to battery acid. We should be able to digest protein very easily unless the pH has gone up and has become a weaker acid. And now we can't tolerate animal proteins especially. So one big clue of having not enough acid or maybe a weaker stomach acid is the intolerance of meat. You just can't digest meat. You reject red meat especially. So I told her, I said, I think we can solve your problem. Are you adverse to consuming animal products if your body can digest them? And she says, no. I said, good. Start taking betaine hydrochloride. Start taking maybe two with a meal, three, four, or five, and keep adding them slowly and then see what happens in a few weeks. I bet you it's going to acidify your stomach. You'll be able to digest the protein and problem solved. So all of our food never comes as one macro, like just pure carbohydrates or pure fats or pure protein, unless you refine them. Um, all foods come in combinations. And when you're looking at protein requirements, it's really the, the amino acid profile or protein inside that food. And if you're doing like a plant-based protein and you're deficient in some of these amino acids, the two big symptoms that you're going to experience are number one, fatigue or lethargy. And number two, your mood is going to drop. But unfortunately, people are using more... Um, plant-based proteins, a lot of soy protein, and it's messing up their digestion. It's affecting their mood. It's affecting their ability to generate energy. I mean, if you look at uh, at least the US, you know, as far as plant-based, we're already at 60% plant-based proteins. Of course, in the form of cereals, which have other carbs. But the point is that we're doing a lot of grains, legumes, uh, tubers, things like that. I think the percentage of animal meat is like 35%. So I just want to clear up a, a few of these really important points. If you have a small child or a grandchild, right, and you, you're shifting them onto food uh, from uh, breastfeeding, unfortunately, a lot of these purees or these toddler foods or these infant formula type foods are just loaded with soy and these so-called healthy, clean plant proteins which is going to create a lot of problems in their digestion. I did find an, a company that I'm going to recommend to you if you need it for your toddler. It's called Serenity Kids. I've never contacted this company. I have no affiliation, but I am just blown away at the quality of these products that they use in these little pouches. They're using like meats from wonderful farms where they have like transparency and they have, they put squash in there and vegetables and bone broth. So it's an awesome product, and I'll put a link down below if you have a grandchild or child that might need something better than the, what they have out there, like in the baby food where they have just applesauce or cereals and just terrible. The next time you read in a label, it says protein. Now you know that there's more to that protein than meets the eye. Now, I have another video that's a, a bit more detailed into this protein requirements and giving you examples of other types of proteins. Um, and I put that up right here. You can check it out.